I'm talking to Camille and Walker today. Tell people what the plot is for your show. I need your look. Um, the plot for the show is that it's basically a bittersweet comedy about my life as mm -hmm. a hustling musician in New York City. Um, it is pretty much autobiographical. And yeah, it's it just tells the trials and tribulations of all the stuff that I've been experiencing. Okay. And you, you worked with Walker on the script and he directed it. So how did you approach, uh, you know, writing your life with someone else? <laughs> Luckily, Walker and I have been friends for many years. Um, we met during Hurricane Sandy in, no oh. joke, in 2012 in New York City. Um, so we've sort of just been close friends ever since. So he's had, you know, 10 plus years of content to be working with firsthand. So when he came to me with the idea about the pilot, we definitely... Um, you know, he's like, he's like, oh, yeah. And then we can tell the story about this, that this happened to you and blah, blah, blah. So we already had so much material to pull from. And it really was just finessing and, you know, sculpting each, each, you know, episode into what story we wanted to tell. And Walker, how did you feel about uh, approaching this? What, what were some considerations that you felt you had to bring in particular? Um. Well, I had to bring a lot of, uh, I had to bring my most cons most consideration that I could summon um, because, you know, it, this is this is someone's Camille is in front of the camera. Not only that, but like we're ostensibly telling stories that are from her life. So everything our process, I'll just quickly go through the process mm. a little bit, yeah. which is that like years and years of talking led to us deciding we were going to do this amazing show and then we would talk about well this has to be in it and but there were so many things that were this has to be in it and then once uh -huh. we kind of like sculpted that down to these are actual storylines and um not only that as we had during our shooting schedule we had a couple sort of like real things that were happening like irl with one of those <laughs> is Camille was performing at City Field for a Mets. She was doing the national anthem at a Mets game. So we were like, oh, okay. We have these scripted things. And then we have this Friday night where Camille's going to be going to the Mets game. How can we script a story that we can sort of like cobble together a story to incorporate the fact that this is happening in her life and the fact that we have access to this incredible venue? Um as yeah so i would write the scripts and then we, we would discuss them we would go back and forth about sort of storylines and and um i would write the script i would come back to camille and we would go over the script together and she was sort of like the honesty um censor would would go up when things didn't quite sound right either to her like she wouldn't say that word or a musician wouldn't use that phrase mm. or this might be funnier if we shifted this scenario around or changed this sort of like accent on this one word, because it can get very micro when you're getting into the nitty gritty of it. But the I have to say that it was, I've had some very, it's tough collaborating and mm -hmm. especially in the writing process. And I would say that in my relatively brief career writing over the decade or more, this has been probably the best working relationship that I've had and with someone who has been just really collaborative and receptive and working. It's it's working together, which is it sounds pretty obvious, but it's not always that way when you're. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Uh, and how many episodes are there? We have five episodes. The first, uh, the first episode and the third episode will be premiering at Tribeca. Um, yeah. We have the second episode is going to be playing at Dances with Films out in LA on June 29th, along with the pilot. And then we have two episodes left. We would love to sell the whole kit and caboodle, but we we're hoping to go elsewhere in the meantime to to just like share this the love we have for this series um, on the festival circuit, and then continuing its life elsewhere, somewhere big and wonderful. <laughs>
Lovely. Um, so uh, back to Camille, is it ever, ever kind of weird, like putting your life story into art, like, like, so, um, in a way where it's not like interpreted it's uh, or less interpretive. It's, it's just kind of out there. Do you ever feel kind of, uh, like, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't have put that in there, but it's too late. It's playing in Tribeca. <laughs> um, the answer is absolutely 100% yes. <laughs> Yeah. But I think I've <laughs> I've had because I release my own music and I've been releasing music for the past few years now. And th then that so that's already a form of sharing some sort of vulnerability or sharing some sort of piece of myself right to the public. And but that's always been in a highly curated way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm in control of every image or video or promo or whatever that is in charge of that. And so in terms of that is what I meant to say. Yeah. So this is just a more inward look and a much more vulnerable uh, side of me. And yeah, it's definitely scary. It's definitely real. It's definitely insane. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was tough and I'm excited. I mean, like it's, it's happening. It's out there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's happening, baby. So <laughs> we will, uh, yeah we're eager to see where it goes from here. I bet you are. So given the title of this project, do you think making any art is like seeking validation? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, it's, I mean, I didn't mean to answer that so quickly, but I think there's, there's always this, especially I'll just speak in terms of songwriting. Cause that's kind mm -hmm. of what I know more is that, or like putting out music as an artist there, oh, there's always this, there's always this push and pull of like, who are you putting this out for? Are you putting this out for yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you putting this out to gain attention from people and to fulfill this hole or void inside of you that you need to be validated in some sort of way, correct? Oh, if I get X amount of plays, then I'll feel better, you know, or if I get a record deal, then it all, then it'll all go away. And so I think that there's definitely truth in that question that you just asked for sure um I'd be lying if I said no so I said <laughs> the most honest answer there <laughs> what do you think Walker um so do you think that phrase it again so do you like think uh, that, that that any sort of art is a, is seeking validation uh i i don't i think that it's a, a complex answer because mm -hmm. okay. um i mean it, i think you we just have to answer it from our own the only perspective that we have which is our own mm -hmm. and i mean i i would prefer to think that i pursue art or want to make art because it's like inside of me and I have this compulsion to do it and I need to do it because I need to express myself mm -hmm. but I think that would probably be a little bit like dishonest because like there is certainly like we are seeking something externally because this life is not lived in a vacuum mm -hmm. so I, I think that like most certainly I'm I'm seeking it from who knows where hopefully for the right reasons but not always sometimes it's for the wrong reasons but I I, I think that like there is a bit of drive certainly in there for just needing that, needing that. And I, sorry to interrupt. I could also just say that it doesn't, if, and when you say validation, it doesn't even need to be external validation. But if you mm -hmm. release art for validation, the answer is yes. You know, like to validate yourself, to be like, I did that and that's me and good job, Cam. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there has to be some sort of validation. I believe, yes. I think even if if that is the case, if people connect with it, it doesn't matter. I think that's a I think that's a great way of looking at it, and it's simple and it's pure. So I'm with you there. <laughs> Thank you. So do uh I do both of you have a favorite moment in the show? Camille, you go first. Like on camera, or just like in the process of? Uh, it? let's say on camera. Hmm. Gosh, I haven't thought. Yeah. I'll, go while, you think. <laughs> I'll go while you think. So um, we we mentioned so we had the five episodes and we actually shot the fifth, the final episode from this like 
first micro season that we produced ourselves. We shot the f- out of order and shot the fifth one first. Um, mm-hmm. And we shot it at this this Italian street carnival in Brooklyn, in North Brooklyn, in Williamsburg. And uh, it's called the Giglio Feast. It has a few different names, but it's known as Giglio. And uh, we shot in the middle of the carnival live with no, like we didn't have any PAs like roping people off or anything. We just completely did it run and gun. And it was an extreme um, sort of example of trial by fire. And this was, this is the double answer because this is my favorite experience, like as a filmmaking experience, but on the camera, the, the way that it is, is like, we could have had all the money in the world and we couldn't have recreated this. So I felt really grateful that we, that the folks over there at the Giglio were very welcoming to us. And we were able to sort of like capture lightning in a bottle in a really compelling way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I was going to say the Giglio Fest, too, because that was just like that was our first that was our first block of. Yeah, we were also so... such know nothing idiots at the very beginning. Oh, yeah, we, really we had to that. learn really fast. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and I think. Yeah. What do you think? I think when I because when I sang, I sang at the very end of this. So basically like the the how this how this little episodic no series. Spoilers, yeah there's bookends of me singing on both ends okay and so but we filmed this sec this end section first so I think it was like me singing after the festival was over just like and really reminding and like the whole episode is about this but I felt it in real time of like deeply reminding myself of like why I love to sing so much and it was really tough and it was so vulnerable in that moment I remember I was like I like sobbed after we were done filming it was so cathartic and um intense but it was necessary and I think it was captured beautifully but I loved that moment too because then I was like yeah this is my strength right now you know because the acting of it all I'm still like but at least I know like I can I can sing my ass off so let's go back to the basics here (laughs) (laughs) guys thanks so much for your time I enjoyed watching your show today any final thoughts you want to end this interview with if you're at Tribeca, please come out right. to one of the premieres and stay true to yourself. I'd Camille say. needs a hot date, so you better bring it. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good luck finding a date. What about you, Walker? Do you have a date? I have, I have date, date is secured. So date secured? Date secured. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll fly out to New York then. There Michael, you go. Michael, we'll, uh, we'll uh, first round on us. Come on out. All right, cool. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.